I'm very grateful because my degree is being paid for by my employer yep. and I won't come out of it with the debt and stuff and it is really, really useful information. Yeah. I come across the Vauxhall Apprenticeship through my mum. She actually told me about it. She works in the HR department. Yeah, it's worth mentioning because there's a family connection here, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to go down the standard university degree route or anything like that. I, yeah. I kind of deferred. I stayed away from it and I didn't want to put extra pressure on myself. So it was a nice way to go about getting a bit more... Hmm. knowledge, education and experience without having to go the traditional route. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the Armchair Show again. Hi, yeah. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Very really well, thank you. Yeah, it's Friday, so yeah. it's, it's, it's always a good thing being a yeah. Friday. Um, for the benefit of the audience, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who, do you, who do you work for, first of all? So I work for Vauxhall officially. Yep. I'm currently working as part of the Persia umbrella in a role for Europark Car Service in marketing. Fantastic. Um, so I'm on an apprenticeship scheme and it's a rotational scheme. So my current role that I've been put into isn't necessarily a Vauxhall one, but it's part of the, the group as a whole. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, what led you to that position? So, um, well, I wanted to stay in after sales because I, I spent my first year in after sales when I joined in 2016. Um, really enjoyed it. I had a great time. There were some projects that I had lined up for the following year because I was th the intention was that I was going to stay. Mm. Uh, I got moved out into HR for six months over at the Vauxhall uh, manufacturing plant. Okay. And then once I'd moved back from there, they let me go back into after sales in a different role, which was great. Um, and then the PSA acquisition took place. And yep. when they told us that Vauxhall were going to be sort of collaborating then with um, Persia in a lot of their areas, one of the affected areas was after sales. That okay. We were going to be moving up to Pinley House. Yep. Um, Full-time staff got the opportunity to either commute or relocate or be displaced into a different area of the business. But as an apprentice, we weren't allowed to commute because of uh, due of care and things like that. Mm. So it was either relocate or get displaced. But I really wanted to stay in after sales. Right. So I stuck with it, relocated to the Midlands yep. and found myself in a marketing role. Because wow. that was the only part of the after sales trifecta, so to speak, that I hadn't done. Okay. So I'd done operations, I'd done trade, and then marketing was the final piece. Fantastic. So, yeah. And was an apprenticeship something that you'd always thought about, or was it was it put on you un unawares? Or? Well, actually, no, it was completely the opposite. So I was working in recovery um, in Newport Pagnell yep. and uh, for CMG, and... Um, it was just the the shifts weren't working for me because I was in the control room. It was a bit of a nightmare trying to get into a like a normal pattern of life. So uh, <laughs> help me all. Yeah, exactly. So um, I come across the Vauxhall apprenticeship through my mum. She actually told me about it. She works in the HR department. Yeah, it's worth mentioning because there's a family connection here. Yeah, isn't yeah. Yep. So um, I went in for the the standard, uh, I guess, the training the the. Assessment day, that's yep. the word I'm looking for. Yep. So I came in for the assessment day and I managed to get it. So I just went for it because it was kind of one of those, I didn't want to go down the standard university degree route or anything like that. I, yeah. I kind of deferred, I stayed away from it and I didn't want to put extra pressure on myself. So it was a nice way to go about getting a bit more hmm. knowledge, education and experience without having to go the traditional route, oh, basically. It was not the most usual root into what you're doing now. I think no. we have a lot of people on, on the show who, it, they say the same thing really, they didn't plan to get into no. the industry that way, which is, <laughs> is, is, I think it's a good thing really. Um, how important have you found education in getting into the role? Um, the education side for me has been a bit of a journey and I think a lot of the people who would have come in in the intake that I came in with um, to Vauxhall would agree. Um, I was pushed up a year because I had previous work experience, previous MVQ, and I was a bit older, so they put me with the year above. Yep. Um, we had a bit of an experience with that because we were at a college that wasn't the best. Okay. There was a lot of complaints and stuff, so we got pulled out of that. That was a HNC, HND route, and we got put on a degree apprenticeship route instead with the University of Hertfordshire. The education... With regards to what I'm doing now, a lot of it does piece in together and it does look, make a lot of sense. Yep. Could I do the job without it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, I'm very grateful because my degree is being paid for by my employer yep. and I won't come out of it with the debt and stuff. And it is really, really useful information. Yeah. So I am. I, I can see the links now, whereas before I probably wouldn't have been able to, which is fantastic. Mm. So it, it does help. And what would you say to businesses that are a little bit unsure about getting involved in apprenticeship schemes? 
I think it's not a bad choice. I, I think it's worth doing, especially mm. with the the levy. Um, I think that's why Vauxhall ended up putting us on the degree apprenticeship as well, because they had this money in this pot that they had to use. Yeah. Um, I think if you if you want to be in a situation where I think for longevity, I think you need to need to consider things like that because yep. people aren't looking to go down the traditional university routes anymore. The debt that you come out with and the job prospects are really, really low. Mm. Um, and that's partially why I didn't want to go. It's, it put me off. So there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other people in the same situation who are looking for other routes and other avenues to get into things like this that aren't going to leave them in like a, not a dead end job, but you know, the... You, the cycle of you can't get that without experience, you can't get experience yeah. without the. You feel like there's an yeah. artificial ceiling above you. Yeah, head. absolutely. Yeah. So I think there's definitely um, opportunities there that people may not be capitalising on. Yeah, and I suppose from the business's point of view, they're probably missing out on talent that they, they wouldn't otherwise Absolutely, find. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, you look at a lot of the apprentices that we've got within Vauxhall, and we've mm. we've had some that have been recognised in so many ways that you read it and you're just like, that's fantastic. Yeah. 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 So. And what would you say to people who are looking to get involved in the industry? Obviously, you, you've, like you say, you've taken quite an, an interesting, diverse route into it. But if someone got up this morning and thought, "No, I do really want to get into the automotive business," what would your advice be to them? Um, my advice would be to look into what you think that you might want to do, because there's a lot more in the automotive industry than you could ever imagine. Um, there's different stems of automotive industry, like when I think back to when I was working in recovery that is automotive industry not yep. in the same way um but that's automotive industry there's the dealership routes there's the service advisor sort of way you could go there's the head office so it's just looking at understanding what you really want to do I would have never thought that I'd be sitting there going I love after sales and learning <laughs> about parts but actually it's not necessarily the parts that I love learning about it's how such a behind the scenes area of the business has such a massive impact yep. on the company as a whole. Yeah. Um, I didn't know things like fleet existed really. I knew that people would sell fleet levels of cars and stuff yep. like that, but I didn't know how it all worked. I didn't know how everything pieced together and it makes a lot more sense now. But my advice would be to find out what you want to do, look and see if there's something you think matches that description yep. and go for it what have you got to lose exactly such great advice and given your experience so far what do you think what kind of character traits uh, are best suited to this industry oh um i think you've got you've got to be quite fast paced depending on what area you're in so after sales changes quite a lot yep uh, it's very reactive and obviously with everything going on with the car market at the moment um, and the changes that are happening with regards to electric vehicles and things, yep. you have to have a head on you that's thinking like five, ten steps ahead. Yeah. Um, I think you've got to be quite a strong character because not necessarily that there's criticism, um, but I think people are a bit more... I think they're a bit more open with their opinions on things because of things changing so yeah. quickly. Um, and I think you've just got to go into everything with quite a positive outlook. If you're a negative person, you're not going to survive very, no, no. very well, no, because negativity attracts negativity. But I think that that translates into every industry, not just does, the automotive yeah. industry. So I would say positive, um, forward thinking, yeah. And quite a confident person, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. And again, this doesn't have to, this question doesn't have to relate purely to the automotive industry. But um, in your experience, in, in other jobs that you've had, yeah. um, what has made a really good boss? What what have been the the personality aspects of that person that have made them great? Okay, so I've had uh, a couple of fantastic bosses. Um, you can I would, name them if you want. As I well, would, don't oh, I can do. <laughs> Just in case they're listening. <laughs> so I um, I wouldn't say that necessarily. I had many fantastic ones before because my jobs before I started at Vauxhall were like your, your college jobs you know yeah. um, and I didn't really have too much interaction with the bosses there um, I've had three fantastic bosses like fantastic bosses at um, Vauxhall Peugeot okay. one of those was Richard Chambers yep. absolutely fantastic he was very very supportive he was it was like a friendship slash managerial relationship it was yep. absolutely amazing we had that's a very hard thing to balance isn't oh it, it is yep. and do you know what it sometimes i think and he would agree with me mm. you could walk in um to the office one day and you'd go hi richard how are you and he'd be like amy not now <laughs> and you'd know <laughs> yeah. you'd know for yeah. the day then like okay but when he was 
in a great mood, which was 99% of the time. Mm. He was fantastic. He right. got me out doing stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. He got experiences that I wouldn't have been exposed to. Yep. Um, very, very supportive. If I was in a conversation with the university, he yep. was there. He was, you know, doing everything he needed to do, asking if there was anything he could do to support my studies, you know. Just so probably uh, very, very attentive and there, yeah. but not too overly... overly but auton so. like he gave me the autonomy that I yep. needed to grow and develop as, as an individual within the workplace as well. Yeah. The next one, um, I didn't get to work with for too long, unfortunately, Philippa Hunter. Hmm. Um, she was my manager from, well, the beginning of June last year to the end of October. Okay. Um, and she's left to pursue other career options within the Formula E racing for oh, well. Jaguar Land Rover. So yep. she's doing great. Um, again, she was willing to fight the corner of those who are the underdog. Yeah. But she did so with a level of class that I couldn't even explain. <laughs> and she's very, very supportive again. Yeah. Um, if I needed anything, if I was struggling with anything, she was happy to sit there and talk me through it, you yeah. know. Just just things like that. And then the most recent is actually my manager now, Darren Pengelly. Yep. He's fantastic. Oh, we had well. Darren on the show. Yes, yeah. yeah. So yep. Darren. Um I think out of out of the three of them, he's probably the the most different because mm. he's like a combination of the two of Okay, so he's quite just gonna meld those two. Yeah, but in like the best ways. Yeah. And I would sit and have a weekly conversation with him about stuff that's going on, which I never had before. Okay. Um, so if I was struggling with anything, and he's always trying to take, that, see if there's stuff that he can take off me or support me with, even though I know his workload is like horrific as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, again, really, really supportive. Mm -hmm. And he's getting me involved in things such as this, yep. you know. There's loads of things that he's getting me involved in that I would have never, ever imagined that I'd be involved in. No. And I'm really, really grateful for it. So I think it's just being able to give exposure but support, but, you know, autonomy. And then it's like a, a, a nice sweet spot of combination of everything. Yeah, and like you say, showing the diversity of the role, really. The fact yeah. that you are sat here today mm. on, a, on a podcast talking about yeah. the industry is fantastic. Uh, I think a lot of, in a lot of apprenticeships, you probably wouldn't get that that amount of um, like no. say exposure, but also the, the opportunity to try something completely yeah. different, you know. And it's getting to see centres and stuff as yep. well. So me and Darren went out to one of our centres not long ago and, and Richard did something similar. So I did a tour of... Um, the southeast of the country, so Norfolk and like Ipswich and okay. all of that, taking yep. workshop measurements for one of the um, projects that Vauxhall has going on at the moment with the hubs and spokes okay, yep. PSA group. So, yep. yes, yeah, so that was really good. So I got to be involved in that. And again, that was five days on the road, measuring workshops, meeting the centre, like the, the dealerships, and it was fantastic. Great experience. Yeah, yeah. great experience. Turning it around the other way, um, and definitely without mentioning names, obviously, um, <laughs> have you had um, a particularly bad experience with a boss that you can think of? Yeah, absolutely. I've had I've had a fair few of those. If you can pick one um, and then perhaps think, uh, tell us why, why it was so Ooh. bad. What, what was it about that person that, that just didn't work? I think it was the complete opposite of what I've got now. And I think that now that I reflect back on it after having three great managers consecutively, yep. and I've been very, very lucky for that, um, having the three now makes me think about how, not bad as such, but how different the, the negative one was. Mm. Now, that's not to say that it was always negative, but... Especially there was a situation where um, I asked some questions that yep. were maybe not desirable. <laughs> there was, yep. it, I had an opinion that differed, like differed from everyone else's. And uh, it, as a result, I ended up with um, quite a few months of not, I just felt a bit like I'd been pushed out. Yeah. And it was like sitting in an office of like loads of people and feeling like you're on your own. Right, okay. And I didn't like that. I'm not that type of person and I'm very outgoing. I like to speak to people. I like to, you know, I like to engage with people. Mm. And um, so, yeah, sitting in a room full of people and feeling like you're on your own and so stuff So you almost like felt that. ostracised yeah, in a way for no ostracized. reason at all. And yeah, just, Not that you should ever have been a reason to be exactly, ostracised. Really. Well, no, but it was just, it was this one occasion that I'd obviously, I was relatively new to the to the role yep. i didn't understand because i'd never done it before so it was kind of a learning exercise i'd always been encouraged to ask questions um and that's how i've always worked because mm. i want to know i want to understand because then in the future i can apply it so i think that one situation made that whole experience which could have been a really positive one for me and one that i could have learned a lot from very negative yeah um so i ended up moving out of that role to a different um area of the business um 
and that manager came up to me afterwards and said, like, I knew they they were doing this to you, and I was mm. like, but you didn't stop. Why did you do you something? didn't stop them. So, yeah. I mean, frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Having been through that, unfortunately, what would you what would your advice be to someone who's listening to this and thinking that sounds really familiar? So, I mean. For me in that situation, I was making notes of things that were happening because mm. I thought if this does get, get escalated anywhere, at least I've got what I need. Um, not that it should ever come to that and it should it's a horrible situation to be in. My, my whole thing would be to find someone that you can trust, even if it's in a different area of the business or outside of the business externally or if you've got a union, and just sit there and speak to them and find out if that if that if there's a way that someone could mediate or, you know, yeah. get something to come from it. And if it really didn't feel like that was going to happen, because people, toxic people, we were saying this earlier on, on the earlier podcast, toxic people don't change. No. You can't change the way that people's mindsets are. And if that's the case, then you need to move. You need to find an area of the business that you're comfortable in that don't make you feel that way, or you need to find a different business. Because well, you appreciate it. Isn't yeah, you're, yep. you're obviously in the wrong place. That place isn't right for you, and that's yep. that's the only thing I'd say. It's not right for you, and you can do far better. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. obviously, you have done that, to be honest. And I think yes. this week has been quite a big week for yourself, oh, hasn't it? Has, it? Because um, yeah. you've won an award, I believe. I have. I've won the PSA Adapt Gold Award. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Great Thank week you. to come on the podcast. I as know. Well. <laughs> so, what was that in recognition of? Um, so, at the tail end of last year, um, I was tasked alongside my manager, Philippa, at the time, um, to plan some conferences for the Euro Park Car Service Network. And what that meant was we were having a, a network um, conference up in the north of the country and one down in the south of the country, basically to get them in on what we were doing, make yep. them feel a little bit like we're. You know, show them what we're getting involved in at the moment. The new winter campaign we um, launched that that at those conferences, yep. and um, basically just say we're here. We, you know, you can contact us. You yep. know, it was the first of their kind, so it was a big deal. Um, and I helped plan those and execute those, great. and yeah, it was just it was. It's great to be re- re- kind of recognised yeah, for that. Absolutely, isn't it? I mean, especially so early on in, in your career. Completely as well. a shock yeah. as well. I, I mean, I had been messaged by one of the girls at work because the BBC had been in to interview me and my mum uh, about okay. our birthdays a couple yep. of weeks ago and they put that in the org announcement. We should say you, you're both born on leap years. Yeah, right, so, yeah. yeah so we're both born on leap year. So um, BBC came in and there was like a whole big fuss with the camera crew and everything like that. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. But I didn't realise they were putting in the organisational communication that went out in the email as our people and celebrating our birthdays basically mm. so one of the girls messaged me and went where's your picture and I, I looked and I was like oh that's weird because normally I just file them away because I don't really yeah. have time to look at them yeah. um, and then it just so happened that I scrolled down to the bottom of the email and I saw my name and I was like <laughs> what have I done like thinking, <laughs> thinking I was in trouble and uh, I scrolled back up and it was like gold award winner and I literally <laughs> I threw my laptop on the sofa and I was like mum I rang my mum and I was like mum look at my look at the look at the organisation announcement she was like what 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 and she went on it she was like oh my god I can't believe it I can't believe you've won the gold award and I'm like Neither can I. <laughs> I don't know what it's to amazing, say. though, isn't it? And like yeah. I say, to have that so early on is such yeah. a great. And it's a great example, actually. If, you know, no matter how you enter this industry, there are those accolades to be to be recognised. Oh yeah, for absolutely. And, um, you don't just kind of quietly go, come in and then wait no. ten years to be recognised. No, for something. no, no. It could happen quite quickly. Which absolutely. Is great. And they had yeah. they had loads of people recognised in there for silver awards and things like that. And I think PSA Group are especially good at recognising when there's been yeah. something very positive in the business. Um, I think that's always been the case, to be fair, from what I've seen. They yeah. always have things going out about people who have, you know, d- gone above and beyond yep. or, you know, things like that. I think they're quite good at it generally. Fantastic. Um, obviously, this is your first time in the, the um, armchair studio yeah. today. Uh, what's your experience been like? Oh, it's been fantastic. It's been really nice and relaxed. Um, it wasn't anything like I was thinking it was going to be. It's <laughs> Everyone really says nice. that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really nice though. Well, we should say actually, there's a we won't give it away, but there's when you come in, you don't really know the studio's here, do you? It's no. a bit of a, a bit of a Narnia experience. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, yeah you're not the in most, Narnia just to the most exciting. I'm not allowed to say it, am I? We we'll keep it secret. We'll keep it secret. Okay. But just, oh just, my um, gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your 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 reaction there kind of I, says I'm it all, doesn't it? Buzzing about how to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most. That's, it is the most house. exciting thing, genuinely. Yeah, yeah I want one as well. Yeah, I have to get that past the girlfriend somehow. <laughs> um, obviously, do, doing this, we, we said earlier, it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. it's fantastic. Um, but what would you say to people who listen to this or watch it and think, "Yeah, I've got a few things I want to say," um, but they're perhaps just not 
not up for it or a bit, bit scared of it, for example. What, what would your advice be having what, spent the, yeah having spent the day with us today? Oh my gosh, it's such a great experience. Like even if you're even if you're quite a shy person, which I know I'm not, so I'm not really qualified to comment on that too much. <laughs> but um, I would say if you've got a group of people, even that you're co- just comfortable with, like I wouldn't have probably felt as comfortable if I wasn't sat with Karen earlier on. Yeah. Um, and I said to her at lunch that it's been fantastic that I've got to share this experience with you because she's such um, an outgoing person and because she's had the experience in the automotive industry, she could pull on things earlier that I wouldn't have known about. Exactly, yeah. So I think if you're too shy as a person on your own, I think definitely go in the first time with a group and yep. absolutely fine. Brilliant. Really great. Great advice. Well, we'd love to have you back at some stage anyway. Maybe oh, yes. back in with your mum. It'd be yeah. great to do a, a kind of dual podcast to find out how that, how that oh, sort of, cool. um, yeah. came about. But um, And again, thanks very much for coming in Thank and congratulations on your reward as well. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thanks, Amy. Thank Thank you.